Hi, my name is Michelle. This is Actuarial, my actuarial YouTube channel. And for the last five and a half months, I have not been working as an actuary. My six month sabbatical is coming to an end in two weeks, and I don't want to go back to work. I don't think this is a surprising conclusion to not working, but whenever someone asks me how my sabbatical is going, I just tell them it's amazing. I recommend it to anyone. <laughs> I recognize that it's a privilege to be able to go six months without a paycheck, but oh my gosh, not working is so nice. I was scrolling through the TikTok the other day, as one does when one does not have a job and has way too much time to scroll through TikTok, and I saw this video that I will play now. I was just talking to a client about this and wanted to share with you. When you are burnt out, the remedy is not getting rest. The remedy is restructuring your life. And yes, that's going to take more time, more energy. But if you just rest, you're just going to come back to the same system that burnt you out in the first place. I think this perfectly encapsulates my fears about going back to work. I left work in large part because I was feeling burnt out. I was feeling disengaged. I was feeling anxious and stressed and like I didn't want to be there. And there is a big part of me that is scared that I will go back to work and I will become depressed, that I will go back to work and I will feel horrible and trapped and scared and miserable and all the little negative feelings that go around in your head and I don't want to feel that way. I have the benefit that I'm going into a new role. I posted a video about that if you want to check it out. But I think I need more than that. I need to change my environment. So I've been doing lots of journaling. If you've been following my personal Instagram, you know that I've been doing the doodle diary every day, which I do want to make a video about because it's been so much fun to make my doodle diary, but also lots of journaling. Recently, I've been working on three lists. They aren't complete. Life is never complete. Things I like about not working, things I used to enjoy about working that I'm looking forward to getting back to, and things that I can incorporate from my non-work life into my work life to make work life better. So today I thought I'd go over some of the things in those lists with you guys, largely because if I make a video about it, I have to structure my thoughts a little bit better than my random scribbles in my various notebooks. <laughs> Maybe if y'all are kind, you can leave me some suggestions in the comments down below. Feel free to thumbs up, subscribe. Let's start off on a light note, things I enjoyed about working. I really enjoyed playing around in databases. When you get a new database and you have access to all sorts of new variables that you can explore, new analytics that you can build, I used to have a lot of fun with that. Coding in general, I really enjoyed doing that. I also really enjoyed reviewing other people's work, teaching people things that I understood, and building processes. Those are some of the worky things that I wrote down in my little home sense notebook. If I could break those down into some of their more core elements, playing with new databases, I think a lot of that was like learning a new thing and being able to see my imagination grow with all the analyses that I can do with it. I think by going to a new team, I'm already gonna have access to that. I'm gonna have so many things to explore, so many new Excel files to learn, so many new processes to learn. I think I'm gonna get a lot of that and I'm really excited for that part. Coding in general goes along with building processes. I really enjoy projects where you have a goal in mind, where you say, this is where I'm starting from. I know about these databases, I know about this information, I know where I'm trying to go with it, but how do I make this turn into this. I really like those processes and one of the things that I want to do in my new team, should they allow me to, is to go over their processes and see what to me as an outsider seems inefficient and what to me seems like could be automated. Now obviously I need to balance this. I don't want to come in and be like, I know how to do everything better. But also when you get new perspectives on processes, sometimes that's where um, inefficiencies become identified. People who've been on the team for a long time are used to their processes and might not be able to take this fresh perspective. So I want to try to bring value without coming over and being like, this is a better way to do it. I know better and you know worse. I'm gonna have to navigate that fine line, but I am excited to try and automate things and try to see what I can make better. One of my plans is to have one-on-ones with everyone on my team, hopefully, because it's summer out, I can convince them to go on walks with me. So go on like a half hour walk around the office or a coffee chat or a virtual call for people who work in our Montreal office. I've already started scripting out questions that I can ask people. One of which is just what would make your life easier? What could I do to make your life easier? What skill sets do you think the team is lacking in? Hopefully those align with my skill sets, but who knows? Back to the things I enjoyed. I really enjoy teaching people things that I understand. I'm not gonna be able to do that at the beginning on my new team, but what I can do is I can teach them about my old team. I'll be working, unless things change, in specialty lines reserving, which is almost nothing like personal lines pricing, but I can present about personal lines pricing 
and I could help the Person Lines Reserving team learn about Person Lines pricing. I can give them further insights, try to teach people things that I know. I don't like being in situations where I'm made to talk about things that I don't really understand. I find that to be a little icky, but when I understand something, I just want to share it with people. When I learn something new, I'm always the first person to be like, did you know about this Excel shortcut? Did you know that you could do this in SAS? Did you know this thing? I just want to teach everyone everything. Sorry, that was aggressive. I also like reviewing other people's work. I think part of this might be a little bit of me being like, I know how to do things better, which is a little ick. I know, it's not nice of me. But I think that's a good way to learn is if I review other people's work, and I'd be like, why are you doing this? Either I learn a new thing or I can identify problems in their work. I might also reach out to my old team and be like, hey, if y'all need a peer review of your work, I'm happy to still keep a leg in the door, still check out your work and try to bring value there. That could be fun. Obvious things that I miss are my colleagues, chatting with people, socializing after work, so I'm really gonna prioritize that human connection. I imagine my first week of work is just gonna be the same conversation over and over again, of like, welcome back, what did you do, what's going on, and then me being like, all right, what's the gossip? Who got promoted? Who's on my team now? Who got married? What's going on? All the gossip. Switching notebooks to things I like about not working. I don't dread Mondays anymore. I don't have the Sunday scaries. I don't wake up in the morning and feel like, ugh, I have to log in. Hopefully I don't get that at the beginning. I love that I have the flexibility to start my day whenever, to do things whenever, to take breaks whenever. I love that I have the option to take naps midday. Often I get really sleepy in the afternoon and at work it would just be like an unproductive couple hours but I would stay logged in. Like I love that now I can nap, I can rest, I can zone out. I love that I have the time to like feel my feelings and self-soothe. Sometimes I get a little bit overwhelmed with life and a lot of emotions and now I can do that. I can do that when I'm working from home, but when I go back, I'm gonna have to be working two days a week from the office. And in the office, it's hard to get that solo time to just self-soothe. I really love that I've been trying a lot of new things. I've worked out with a couple different trainers. At the time that I'm filming this, tomorrow I am going to a Pilates class. I've been going to talks at U of T. I've been signing up for random events on Eventbrite. I went on a friendship making walking tour. I went to a sound bath. I went for a face massage talk from some influencer. That was kind of fun. Obviously I've been traveling. I love that I've been able to do all these new activities and I need to keep it up. I find that often before what I do is I just feel tired at the end of the day and not want to do anything, but I just need to schedule activities, give me something to look forward to. I love that I have been walking a ton. For more than two consecutive months, I've gotten over 10,000 steps every day. I love walking. This is a big thing that I need to keep up in my life. If I can take walking meetings, either walking one-on-ones or just like call into a meeting, I really want to prioritize that. Going on lunch walks is going to be really important as well. Maybe even going on morning and evening walks, but really getting my 10,000 steps in, moving my body. That hot girl mental health walk is so important to my mental health and my physical health, but more my mental health. I really love my doodle calendar. I love that it gives me a creative outlet. I love that it forces me to reflect on my day and say what was a highlight of my day, what was a memory of my day, what was something unique about my day, but also it forces me to plan things so that I have something interesting to do to doodle. It gives me a really nice overview of what happened in my day, what happened in my month that's fun to look at and I really hope that I keep up with that. I think if I'm working every day it might be hard to find new and novel things to doodle so I'm really gonna have to try harder to do cool things. I don't know what my July doodles are gonna look like yet. I've really been enjoying learning Python. I think part of what that is is the coding element. I like coding, I enjoy that, but also the fact that it gives me a structured goal. Data Camp structures it in three to four hour courses and it's really like, do this course, finish the course, accomplishment, do this course, finish this course, accomplishment. And I didn't really have structured goals at work. I always found it very hard to think up a structured goal. It's always like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I think I really, when I go back to work, I need to focus on finding myself some structured goals, things to work towards. None of my goals in life are career related. I don't really have career ambition, but I think I can still have goals within my career. I've already spoken about some of the things that I want to incorporate into my work life, but some others include possibly learning how to use OneNote. In my old team, we used to track everything in GitHub, which I love. I thought it was great, a great way for the team to share, and I'm excited to learn how my new team shares all their information. I doubt it's with GitHub. 
so I'm probably gonna have to find a new way to document things and I think OneNote could be a fun way to do it. I've been watching some tutorials and it seems interesting so I want to become a OneNote girly. I'm tracking things like my accomplishments, compliments that I got, projects that I worked on, documentation, things I learned, things that I can fix, all of that. If I do come up with a good structure, I will make a video about it, but uh, for now, I don't even know how to use OneNote. I've never, I've never used it. I want to allocate time in my day for learning and time in my day for teaching. Those are two things that I enjoy doing and I want to make sure that I prioritize that. It's not just about getting my work done. I want to take the time to get to know my team, get to know what's going on with them, get to know what I can do to make their life easier, and then work on fixing those inefficiencies. See what I can do to make the world better. Hopefully that makes my return to work a little bit sweeter. I'm not one to enjoy change but I am excited for this change because I think restructuring my work life is what I need. Thank you for following my actuarial journey. I love you guys and I'll see you next time. Thank you for calling. Bye!